Okay, part seven. So again, as usual, I will link, I will post the link to this worksheet below. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below or email me. And let's get started. Three consecutive integers add up to 219. What is the smallest integer? All right, so consecutive integers means x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 because x, x plus 1, x plus 2 are going to give you three consecutive integers. And those are going to add up to 219. And now all you need to do is add up the x's together. So 3x plus 1 plus 2, 3 equals 219. Subtract the 3 over. And then divide by 3. So we have 216 divided by 3, 72. So x equals 72. Now it wants to know the smallest integer. Since our smallest integer is x, that is our answer. Now if they had asked for the largest integer, you would have added two to this. So just be wary of what actually they're gonna ask you. Okay, a baseball player is at batting practice. Out of 135 pitches, he missed one of every nine. How many pitches did he hit? Okay, so if they're in a cycle of nine, let's see, 135 divided by nine is 15. Okay, so he missed one of every nine, so that means he missed 15. So now how do we find out how many he actually hit? 135 minus 15, 120. It takes two people four hours to fill a moving truck with boxes. If two more people come and help at the same rate, how long will it take to fill the truck? Well, if you double the people, you're going to half the rate. So four people will take two hours, okay? Because we double the people, half the rate. Okay, the value of A is inversely proportional to the value of B, which means A one over B. If B increases by 10, what happens to A? So if this denominator increases by 10, right, A is actually going to decrease by 10. So our answer is it's going to decrease by 10. A bag contains only red and green marbles. The ratio of red to green is five to two. So red to green is five to two. Which could be the total number of marbles in the bag? Well, as it stands right now, five to two, that's a total of seven. Okay, we don't have that there. Now let's multiply it by two. That'll give us 10 to four, which gives us 14, which we actually have, and let's double check it. So let's times it by 3. 5 times 3, 15. 2 times 3, 6. Add those together, we get 21. And that's not there. So 14 is our only answer. All right, the probability of choosing a pair of argyle socks from a drawer is 2 sevenths. So argyle is 2 sevenths. The probability of choosing a pair of striped socks is 2 fifths. If the drawer contains 35 pairs of socks, so 35 total, and the only types of socks are argyle, stripes, and solids, how many socks are solids? Okay, so we've got stripes and solids. So how many total socks are solids? All right, so here our total, well, first we need to get a common denominator here. So the common denominator will be 35, so times 5 times 7. So that gives us 10 35ths and 14 35ths. So now how much do we have left over for our solids? So 10 plus 14 is 24, so 35 minus 24 is 11, so 11 35ths. All right, and since 
the denominator and our total number of socks are the same, we actually know 11 pairs of solids or solid socks. All right, Doug spent A dollars on each of the 10 hamburgers and B dollars on each of the 15 hot dogs for a cookout. In terms of A and B, how many dollars did he spend? Well, it's 10 times A and 15 times B. And that's it. So you have your rate times your individual and rate times the individual. And how many? If the ratio of 1 7th to 1 5th is equal to the ratio of 42 to X, what is the value of X? All right, so first of all, we're just going to do the reciprocal of both of these. So, okay, so 7 to 5. That is equal to the ratio of 42 to X, okay? So now, what can we multiply 7 by to get 42, right? That would be 6. So we're going to times all of this by 6. So then we get 42 to 30. So X equals 30. So this next one is your standard formula for any time they have a question about solutions, okay? So it doesn't matter if it's lemonade or, you know, some chemical thing. Um, the steps that we're getting ready to do can apply to all these types of questions. All right, a certain cafe makes lemonade with a ratio of one part water or two parts water to five parts lemon juice. So two to five. They also make iced tea with a ratio of three parts tea. So we're gonna have another ratio up here for tea. So iced tea is three parts tea to one part lemon. If they wanna make Arnold Palmer's with equal parts water and tea, so Arnold Palmer, equal parts water and tea, what fraction of the Arnold Palmer is lemon juice? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is figure out what number is gonna go here. So it has to be the same number, but it also needs to be divisible by three and two, okay? The lowest number that we know of would be six. All right, so we're gonna multiply this ratio by three to get six there this ratio by two to get six there. All right, so we got water, lemon, and tea. So two times three, six. Five times three, 15. One times two, two. Three times two, six. Okay, and now our Arnold Palmer will be six to six with 17 in the middle. Now, what fraction of the Arnold Palmer is lemon juice? So we know the part, remember it's part over whole. So the part that's lemon juice is 17, and our total, our whole, is 17 plus 12. So 29, so 17 over 29. All right, last one. The area of two circles are in a ratio of 16 to 25. If both radii are integers and R1 minus R2 is two, what is the radius of the larger circle? Okay, so first of all, we know that our larger circle is going to be the first circle because in order to get a positive number over here, the larger number has to be in front, okay? So circle one is larger. So that's our first thing. R1 minus R2 is equal to 2. Now the two circles are in a ratio of 16 to 25. Since the one is at front here, so let's just switch this. So 25 to 16 to keep our larger circle always on the left. So since we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared, we can actually set those in a ratio as well, right? Now, if we divide pi by both sides, that drops off. So we're just left with r squared to r squared. 
So in order to get rid of this power of two, we're gonna square root both sides. So if we square root both sides here, we get five to four. Now, if we subtract these, we do not get two, right? Because five minus four is one. Well, that doesn't work. So now we'll take our ratio and multiply it by two. So then we get 10 to eight. Well, if we subtract those, we get two. There we go. So the radius of the larger circle is 10.